Hello dear visitors, dear sub subscribers of my YouTube channel Retro Photo House. Today, uh, today I'm ready for another, another review. I've been asked many times. Uh, so I will talk about Jupiter 9, very famous and very known um, prime Russian lens. Basically the line of Jupiter 9 it covers different systems uh, with Contax rangefinder mount, with Leica L39 mount, and for SLR single reflex camera, cameras with M M42 and, and M39 mount. So today I will talk about SLR version because I had a chance to gather in my hands at once all known versions of uh, this lens. I've sold more than 300 pieces of this lens and I have some data and I can talk from my experience about the uh, these versions and about years of production and about all different details. Uh, so today there will be uh, this review divided in two parts. First part I will show the timeline of this lens. I will explain each one. I will take and explain the differences. And second part I will take all these lenses and make just a, a test of all of them, including sharpness test, at different aperture values, um, bokeh test, and um, all other parameters of this lens. So uh, let's start. This lens is based on Carl Zeiss Sonar optical design developed in 1932 sorry, by Lu Ludwig Bertelle, very famous German engineer, optical engineer. And um, after Second World War, the technology and uh, documentations were transferred to Soviet Union and on Krasnogorsky mechanical plant they started to produce the this lens so uh, but first it was a rangefinder version and uh, the SLR version appeared with Zenit 3 Russian SLR camera and um, the production started, I guess, in 1960. There is very limited information, even in Russian sources, about the um, years of start and end of manufacture. But I've, according to my database, the earliest I found it was made in 1960, and it was KMZ plant, very shortly, uh, and after uh, maybe one or two years. It was this lens uh, was in production at KMZ plant, and after it was moved to Litkarino optical mechanical plant, Loms, and here you have the sign of Loms. You can see it here, and uh, all the time from maybe 62 or maybe 63 three to the end of collapse of Soviet Union at 1991 this uh, version for SLR cameras it was in production at Loms plant so first it was in a white aluminium body as here you can see I have this version so the writing is in Cyrillic and uh, here the serial number shows that this lens was made in 1966 so um, all Jupiter's 9 they have the same characteristics the maximum aperture is 2 the focal length is 85 millimeters all of these lenses they feature 15 blades iris you can see here and it gives really round beautiful bouquet it stops down and opens very smoothly and there is no octagons no hexagons no this kind of things so uh, what can i say else um, what about filter filter thread 
it accepts 48 on 075 filters is here you can see and all the another versions it's exactly the same uh, it features the preset aperture mechanism for example here you may see so if you want for example to stop to stop down lens at f.5.6 here so you just move the ring with clicks and after you focus it wide open and with this ring you just stop down to the desired value without watching any more on the rings and you can concentrate on your shooting subject or uh, object sorry so this is very useful mechanism and lens can be focused from infinity to 0 0.8 meters and all the same they are all the same the minimum and maximum focusing distance is the same so uh, here and what about mount mount it has m39 mount but please uh, do not make the mistake um, with a do not uh, because here m39 mount is not the same as leica 39 mount if you will uh, want to use this lens on your for example mirrorless camera you need to put here the step ring m39 to m42 ring like here and then you take only m42 adapter for example i have here m42 to next adapter and in this way it will work pro properly on your for example sony next mirrorless camera because if you will take by mistake mistakenly the m39 adapter like this one if you will put onto your mm, next system lens will not work you will not be able to focus at all please don't make this mistake so the there is an M39 mount. Why it's made in this way? Because the Need 3 and the Need 3M uh, Soviet cameras they had the M39, this M39 standard mount, and flange focal distance 45.2 millimeters. So on modern uh, with this adapter, you will not be able normally to focus on infinity just a little bit but it's not a big deal because normally this lens is used for portraiture work delivering really outstanding results uh, what about optics here it seems that the, it has the enlightened optics uh, chemically what i found in the russian sources and um, overall build quality is very good and um, later we will see the comparison with other lenses this one is really hard to find in pristine condition because lens is very old so um, then when we will look back to our timeline approximately in and the end of years 60s there was uh, just a little transition period and uh, another version was in production but it is quite rare this is also m39 mount m39 mount you can put the ring but in black varnished body in black varnished body and optics seems to be enlightened as well so it uh, there is a quite good coating to to help lens work properly in difficult light conditions
and here as you may see there is also there is already writings in uh, in latin because this lens was already sold for export and this lens the version as i said is quite rare among my sold among my 300 sold jupiter's 9 this is maybe third or fourth that i have in my hands all this all the rest is the same as white version here the same filter the same mount focusing and uh, for example here the aperture values from f at 2 to f at 16 as well as here and all the versions they show the same aperture f-stops uh, so uh, another um, when we, we will look further to the timeline uh, from 1970 the it was changed a little bit to more simplicity i guess they the aim was to economize the production costs or um, i don't know uh, but uh, here we have this version it was in production from 1970 to 1980 also loms made to the same side and it has has just this simple matte board body by the way here it has m42 mount and and with flange focal distance of 45.5 millimeters so with normal ad adapter m42 adapter you are able to reach infinity uh, it seems that here the glass is much more some simpler um, it is single single coated optics um, without any for example you see here the light how it reflects as well as here you see and here it's much much simpler it, it has a single coated optics also it has the same preset mechanism um, the same 15 blades iris sometimes there is a traces of oil on the blades but generally this is is not a big deal except if there is too much but here it's completely okay all the rest is the same focusing f-stops filter thread weight all the Jupiter weight 360 grams this one this one the early one is the same thing focusing this version and this and this one all the version i would say they have very smooth and precise fo focusing and uh, you, you can see here uh, focusing ring turns around 300 degrees for smooth and pleasant focusing this version also was made for export with the jupiter 9 written in latin characters so in the 1980 i guess they have changed a design of the lens and the body became a bit different black new body and here the same uh, plant loams here i have this version this one for example is made in 19, 1987 you may see so body is different here uh, but uh, focusing is more or less the same here you have the writing aperture writing on the top of the ring Jupiter 9 here focal distance aperture the preset ring also 15 blades there is here for example there is no oil in the at the blades m42 mount with 45.5 flange focal distance optics here is also single coated and um, it looks like this 48 millimeters of filter thread 
weight also 360 grams. And the li latest um, known version, it was made maybe started from 1987. I don't know exactly, there are no data about it, but I would suggest something like this. To 1991, to the collapse of Soviet Union. This is the same version, but it features the multi coated optics, and here you, you may see MC writing is added. All the, say, all the things are the same except that it has, it claimed to have, and I think it has, multi coated optics. You see, light reflects, it makes some just a green green tint here you may see here and here it's a purple tint here not at all and here some kind of green tint on the optics also the same blades number of blades and all the same all the remain the same so this is all uh, known versions and for, for ease of further explaining, I will just write, let's assume that this one is type 1, okay? Type 1. This one, transition. A rare, really rare version in transition body and mm, enlightened optics. This will be type 2. This one is type 3. Type 3. This one, respectively, in new body M42 mount. This one is type 4. I don't know if you see. Yes, here, type 4. And this one, the latest known MC version, it will be type 5. And uh, later, when sh I will show you the photo samples, I will just put on the image the type 1, type 2, type 3, type 4, and type 5 here like this please remember in order to be able easily understand what lens I'm talking about and of course all of them are developed to be used with full frame film because it was a film era at the time and it covers 24 on 36 millimeters frame. Few words about technical specifications of this lens. All of them, they have angle of view of 28 degrees. Uh, the optical schema is consists that is composed of seven elements in three groups here inside. And the uh, res resolution power is 30 lines per millimeter in the center and 18 lines per millimeter on the edges of frame. So uh, right now I have said everything uh, what I knew about the different modifications of this lens. and. Uh, I want to pass to second part of my review where I will talk about results. It's very interesting the results these lenses are showing. Second part of my review of Jupiter 9 lens for SLR SLR cameras and um, so I've tested these lenses, all five versions, with my 
Sony A7 full frame mirrorless cameras, camera sorry, and I've just loaded the results into Lightroom developing software and um, you can assess by yourself the results. So let's call this Sen1. Here you can assess the bokeh lens is rendering and as well as the center sharpness because I've shoot the very little tiny letters here. And um, all these uh, tests were shoot at automatic white balance setting and as well at ISO 2000 with one on one 160 shutter speed. Here you can see the file name type 1, type 2, type 3 and so on. And let's see how lenses are performing. So here we have type 1 silver version. Mm, very is this is all photos are made at wide open so here you have you can see very beautiful bouquet and the sharpness when we zoom it in to 100 percent quite decent sharpness it shows um, here we have type 2 type 2 i like this uh, very much because very beautiful color rendition you can see here histogram shows um, no shift to warm or cold uh, colors we'll just take a look at how it renders the wood here very beautiful natural color um, very good sharpness, center sharpness, as you may see here as well. Uh, so I like this personally very much, this result. Type 3, not very good. Uh, some problems with counter light here. There are these light smudges, as you may see. Um, sharpness below average. Bokeh, you can see by yourself. Type 4, quite good, I would say. Sharpness is average, yes, average. Type 5, uh, some weird uh, color rendition, you can see here. And the uh, histogram shows also some kind of shift bouquet is okay mm, uh, sharpness above average i would say so one more time type one type two type three type four type five and here I have just cropped the center to 100%, zoomed in as strong as I could. As I, and here you can assess the sharpness. Type 1, type 2, excellent. Type 3, below average. Type 4, average. Type 5 average or a bit above of average. Uh, test shots. Uh, so here we have the same sand, uh, but the lens, every lens is stopped at 5.6. Uh, so here you can assess the results. This is type 1. You can see here type 1 type 2, type 3, very blurry bokeh, I think because it has few uh, scratches on the glass, so it may happen that it the scratches ha makes this, uh, this effect in the photos. Type 4, 
and type 5 and there is very in I've made just uh, the uh, zoom 100% zoom cropped image type 1 the same area in order to be able to assess really detailed in detail in detailed way here type 4 type 5 so I would say type 2 the best sharpness type 1 maybe or maybe type 5 type 2 type 5 type 1 type 4 and type 3 please take a look at another test shot this test, test shot represents the same scene but we will assess the focus uh, on the edges so i've put the object of focus at the edge of the frame and you can assess by yourself how sharp the lens is on the edges so here we have type 1 type 2 respectively type 3 type 4 and type 5 so all the photos were made at ISO settings 2000 and 125 um, second of shutter uh, speed so the best uh, color rendition is type 2 as usual uh, but sharpness is so so type 3 the blurry bokeh and sharpness is not very good as you may see here uh, so this is type type 4 and this is type 5 uh, let's and cropped to 100% the writings on the focusing focused object and here you can assess very quickly the edge sharpness one more time type 1 type 2 type 3 type 4 and type 5 and type 5 this is exactly the same scene but just all the lenses are stopped down to f at 5.6 and um, uh, you can check by yourself how, how it looks like type 1 type 2 type 3 type 4 and type 5 one more time in my personal opinion uh, they shows they show death and sharpness especially type 1 look the beautiful image very sharp very good co colors type 2 also very very beautiful type 3 here type 3 is worse by the way this is type 4 and type 5 respectively also very good sharpness at the edges you can see it one more time type 1 type 2 type 3 type 4 and type 5 and as usual the 100% zoom at the focused area type 1 type 2 type 3 type 4 and type 5 I would say type 1, type 2 and type 5 are performing in the best manner. 
you can see on this photo I would say real life sand and um, I will assess here uh, all five versions of Jupiter 9 lens just I would say in real condition more or less this is type 1 very good colors um, type 2 even better colors and uh, contrast better contrast type 3 a bit worse type 4 average and type 5 I would say above average the color rendition contrast and overall performance so one more time type 1 type 2 very beautiful really type 3 type 4 and type 5 these photos are coming from camera without any post-production treatment so i would say as is only on camera jpeg please take a look at the following pictures i've shoot the test chart and with help of this tool we will assess vignetting and distortion every lens shows so this is type 1 type 2 type 3 type 4 and type 5 uh, so this uh, every lens was stopped down at f at 2.8 and you can assess results by yourself so there is no visible vignetting and maybe very very light distortion you can see it here but overall results is pretty nice type 2 the same thing no vignetting extremely light distortion but edges a bit worse type 3 Type 3 the same thing, no vignetting, extremely light distortion, sharpness a bit worse I would say. Type 4, type 4 shows us the same, more or less the same results, except sharpness is not very good as you may see here. For example, this is type 4 and type, five, uh, type 1, sorry, so you can just see the difference it shows you see and type 5 the same thing no vignetting light distortion and the sharpness not very not so good as type 1 and, and type 2 Jupiter 9 lens so this test charts I will send the link in the comments so you can just download these test charts and examine them by yourself.